This is my blood, and one of these 10 Venus fly traps is going to eat it at the end of this video. But which one deserves it the most? Well, for the past year, each one of them has been using their own tactics, personalities, and experiences to outdo each other and climb up the leaderboard. And today, we will find our winner of this series, the Flytrap Games. And there's no better way to start off the finale than with the king of the flytraps. B-52 has always been the biggest and most popular flytrap in the world. Yet, 11 years ago, he met his biggest threat to that title, DCXL. And the flytrap games has been their battleground. Although B-52 fell behind early in the competition, he has more than proven his status by setting a world record catch in episode 8 and skyrocketed all the way from 7th position to 3rd. What's made this worse for his biggest rival, DCXL, is that the moment B-52 broke his record, he choked up, which gave B-52 the chance to take over the leaderboard. However, the question of which one is better hasn't been settled yet. B-52 still has one more attempt, and if he messes up, he will dip below DCXL, who will then be our new king. Yet, if B-52 catches something, anything, he'll hold onto his spot above DCXL and be a major competitor for the prize, especially because our top competitors still have one more catch to go, and if they mess up, then top spot will be open for anyone. Now, bear in mind that these two fierce rivals are literally babies. And although these traps are average size, they're actually the smallest they will ever be. And even at this small size, they can still catch some impressive bugs, like a damn spider. This is the first time a spider has ever been seen in the flytrap games, as they generally don't come out during the day, let alone out in the open where the plants compete. This guy was probably sleeping under the traps and must have woken up when the pot was moved outside. Regardless, they do make up the majority of a flytrap's diet, so it isn't too surprising that he's here. It also won't be surprising if he escapes, because they are that strong. Yet knowing how well B-52's nectar works at getting bugs drunk, it's likely that this spider won't see it coming. Damn, that was fast! It's no wonder that B-52 remains our king. He never disappoints with his catches. And thinking back on it, he has some of the craziest catches in the competition. Like when he caught that giant black and white fly in episode 8, that thing was way too big to get caught in a trap that small, yet he still ended up setting his world record. But seeing a spider in this competition isn't something I was expecting, so I don't know how many bonus points he should get. I didn't even print a picture for it. 16 points may be fair, as this is two more than the previous rarest bug in the competition, the black fly that we just saw. Regardless, this insane catch keeps him far above his biggest rival, DCXL, which settles that debate for now, while they're babies. However, we do have one contestant that doesn't seem to have grown up, even though they are a mature plant. Sharktooth, who believes he is a shark for the simple fact that he is named after one, is trying to follow his ancestors and get a taste of blood. Now, unless he catches something as interesting as a spider, his chances are pretty slim. Uh, well, okay then, a wasp. That's interesting, especially because they can escape. And if he can get a good enough time with this hull spawn, he could easily compete for the drop of blood against the two leading fly traps in today's event, Dracula and Crosstooth. That's if he can actually hold on to this wasp. They are one of the few insects that can push and bite their way out of a flytrap. And although this hasn't happened so far in this series, it might be for a good reason. 
The only times wasps rarely eat their way out of a trap is when they get caught without eating too much addictive nectar. And the only fly traps that rarely attract them are the experienced ones that know how to use their nectar. So Sharktooth is doing a perfect job as a fly trap at getting this wasp drunk before trying to catch it, as a miss will push him so far from the leaders that winning the blood will only stay a dream for him. Ah, oh, damn, this wasp could easily escape right now. All she needs to do is walk backwards and she'd be free. Ah, oh, but it seems like the nectar has got her so drunk that she's making the worst mistake of her life by staying still. This is great for Sharktooth, but this probably reminds him of his biggest ever mistake from episode 10. If he hadn't missed that fly, he would have been much higher up on the leaderboard and could have easily competed with the top fly traps, especially because the top spots can still change. Yet, a mistake is something the number one has never made. Dracula. It's a mystery, but he arrived in the competition out of nowhere and has absolutely dominated everyone. He's done so well that he has credit time from all of his bonus points. Obviously, I'm a bit worried as I don't really want a plant called Dracula to get a drop of my blood. And as unfortunate as it is, my saving grace and Dracula's biggest competition is still looming in the background. The spoiled brat Crosstooth. It's amazing that a plant with gaps in his teeth has come this far but I'd rather deal with Crosstooth bragging about a win than a vampire planning world domination or something else out of Little Shop of Horrors. But until Crosstooth has his chance to prove his worth, Dracula has one last opportunity at improving or losing his lead in this competition. It's likely that he'll use the same tactics as every other event. Mesmerize the fly with those beautiful colors, and grab them once they're confused and hypnotized. This is just like episode 9. He's playing with his food again. And just like last time, he's showing off by only holding onto his catch with his little daggers. Oh wait, it's, mo it's moving. The fly's pulling its way out. This cannot be real. This is the biggest mistake Dracula has ever made. This has opened the doors for B-52 to creep up another spot in the leaderboard and challenge our longtime leader, Crosstooth. If it weren't for that miss, Dracula would have been the one to challenge Crosstooth for that prize. Every single one of his catches has been perfect up until now. Was he nervous? Nah, that's not possible for someone like him. Maybe he was celebrating too soon, but that doesn't make sense either. Either way, this does give Crosstooth the opportunity of a lifetime. He absolutely cannot mess this up if he wants that blood. And seeing as he hasn't appeared since episode 5, he has had 6 months of rest to prepare for this exact moment. Keep in mind that over the past 6 months, his score has been so good that he has barely left the top spots on the leaderboard even as new competitors joined the competition. And honestly, he hasn't stopped bragging about it either. He's even gone out and got himself a brand new pot, divided another three times, and grown so much bigger in preparation for today that it would be hilarious to see him miss. Let's not jinx him. He could mess up just as bad as Dracula here, especially as he's trying to catch the rarest bug in the competition. And this one is so damn small, it could easily fit in between the gaps in his teeth and just walk out. Oh, that's insane! This fly isn't reacting! It's like it's been hypnotized or something. It's, it's literally not moving at all. It doesn't even want his nectar. Why isn't it trying to escape? This doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't this fly try to escape? Is he stupid enough to get bribed or something? Nah, I mean, they're bugs and plants, so that's not really possible. Is it? 
Regardless, it's time to see where Crosstooth sits on the leaderboard and give the winner their drop of blood. If you had told me one year ago that a spoiled brat, the flytrap with tiny traps and huge gaps in his teeth, would end up being the most dominant flytrap in this competition and become the first ever winner in the flytrap games with bonus credit time, I would have been confused because bonus points weren't set up back then. But I honestly didn't think that our winner would be Crosstooth. So it's time to give him the prize of a lifetime. Blood. Now there are a few things that we have to watch out for. Seeing as blood is so full of nutrition, Crosstooth over here is either going to grow really well or he'll end up dying because there is too much nutrition for him. But don't worry guys, he'll probably end up growing really well and he probably won't stop bragging about it with everyone else in the greenhouse. Obviously guys, don't do this at home, but you should know that this doesn't hurt if you've ever tested your blood sugar levels before. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't hurt guys, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. Life is not love. All these flower traps have trigger hairs inside of their traps which need to be touched before the plant will close or start digesting their food. I'm gonna have to stand here for a little bit and make sure that cross tooth here is actually digesting my blood. Now seeing as no one has ever done something like this before, feeding every single trap that they can feed on a Venus fly trap and then recording how it actually grows after a few weeks, this might be a breakthrough. We might figure out something really interesting about these plants. So all we have to do now is wait and deal with Crosstooth bragging about how well he's done and how good the blood tastes here in the greenhouse with all the other cultivars and them too. And bragging is what he didn't do. After two weeks of letting him digest his food, he did one of the strangest things a flytrap could do in spring. He stopped growing. All of the traps that had some blood started to turn a little bit black. Now this is totally normal for old traps or traps that have a really big meal, but aside from him growing new traps very slowly, any of the developing traps that just touched a drop of blood completely stopped growing. But the weirdest part of how he reacted to this blood happened about a month later. At this point, almost all of the traps that have eaten the blood have started to go black. And don't worry, I will open one up to see what it looks like inside. Like I said, this is normal, but what is not normal is that when he started growing new traps again, they were worse than before. They're smaller and they no longer have crossed teeth, but for some reason, the traps that grew after these small ones are much bigger than the ones from before the experiment and they have now got their normal cross teeth and weird stems again. Some people say that overfeeding Venus flytraps can cause them to stop growing or to slow down, but honestly, I'm not too sure about this. They catch so much food naturally that it's hard to believe that they can be overfed. Yet I can believe that the blood could have been slightly toxic or maybe it took the plants a lot of energy to actually digest the blood, making it slow down. And when it finally did eat the blood, it had so much more energy than before that it could grow like crazy. But I think the weirdest part of it all is what the blood looks like after it has been digested. There is absolutely nothing left except for this dark dust. Now what is really interesting to me is that this dust could be the iron in my blood as it does smell metallic. But without testing it, it's just a guess. I know the plants never make a smell when they digest their food, so it isn't that either. It's most likely just a mix of the leftover parts of whatever you find in your blood. But what if there was a carnivorous plant that could eat hundreds of bugs all at once? Well, we actually found the world's biggest carnivorous plant and that video is on screen for you to watch right now. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed the series and maybe comment who your favorite competitor was. I'll see you in the next video.